Hello and welcome to the Fostering Diaries. We're in the car because it's the only place that's quiet right now. I am a solo foster carer in the UK and here on this channel I share all about my experience and hopefully offer advice and tips to new foster carers or people who are thinking of becoming foster carers. So if that sounds interesting to you, hit that subscribe button, like this video and let's get into it. Uh, no. Before we get into it, let me say that this is a topic that is brand new to me. And I would like to ask, there's, absolutely there are foster carers out there that know more about this subject than me. And if you are one of them, or if you've got any advice or tips at all surrounding this subject, please leave them down below in the comments to help me out. If you know, the, I'm sure you know things that I don't know. And also to help out anyone else who stumbles across this video, if you can offer any different apps or advice of things that you've picked up over the years of fostering or anything please do share it down below in the comments i would love it if the comment section has loads of tips and advice for people surrounding this subject even if you're not a foster carer as parents this is a topic that we you know we face now let's get into it so as a foster carer i have before these children that have recently been placed with me they've been with me about three weeks now the eldest child i've ever had has been they turned five when they were with me so four or five year olds i've had newborns up to that age and this topic of online safety and devices and everything has never really come up for me because it's just not a, a thing that you know young children are just they just haven't used devices they haven't been going on the internet so it hasn't been something that i've had to think about and this time, I've got slightly older children, it has all of a sudden been like, whoa, hang on, what do I do about all of this stuff? And it's been a very steep learning curve. I'm just gonna offer, in this video, I'm just gonna offer the things that I have learned over the past few weeks, offer about some advice on like little apps and different things that I've found. And like I say, if you have any others, please do leave them down below in the comments. So I think that we would agree that as adults, it is our, job to not only for our foster children for all children we need to keep our children safe online because the online world is a wonderful place but it's also full of a lot of not very nice people and it can be a very dangerous place as well particularly for impressionable young children and so when these children arrive with me with the potential of phones and tablets i was like whoa hang on a second i need to step back here and think about what on earth i'm gonna do what's appropriate what's not appropriate and i had these conversations with the children and we i said for right now we can't go on them we need i need to make sure and i had this obviously this would be age dependent on or not necessarily age dependent but understanding dependent on how much the child would understand that explanation of that what I'm doing is you know I, I want to keep you safe I need to keep you safe and explain in that online world because some children may not understand they may not have been told about the potentials the risks of certain apps or social medias or things online like you know I want to play Roblox they just see it as this simple I'm playing the game yeah but unfortunately everything everything out there it's crap that we live in this world but you know we do there's horrible people out there and so i just had the explanation or i had the conversation with the children that we can't do them right now i need to find out i need to know, like, know what's on these devices and i need to look at the ages and things and yeah and we had a conversation about online safety and how and they don't necessarily understand that because they're they're just innocent they're little kids and they're innocent and they don't get that but i think it's important to be honest with them about the situation so we said like no right now no and, and quickly i had to get on a steep learning curve of googling of information about stuff and i found some really useful things that I wanted to share with you. So I first found the Carly Ryan Foundation, which it's Australian, but it's it's an awful story about Carly Ryan, who unfortunately was murdered in, um, I can't remember whether it was on Snapchat or, or on, on an app, anyway, or something, 
someone online she met someone online she thought that it was like an 18 year old um, and she's like fell madly in love with them and it, she would chat for months with them and then met up with them and it turned out that it was this like 50 year old man or something and anyway she was murdered <laughs> tragically tragically murdered what an awful end to that story but there is this carly ryan foundation i will leave anything that i talk about and links and things i will leave them all down below in the description and the sun is coming up behind me and it's a little bit bright should we try and move let's try and move there we go that's better it's a big steering wheel in the way but that's all right uh, so yeah carly ryan foundation it's carly ryan foundation.com i've just pulled it up on my phone here and on here is a little fact sheet on loads of different apps as you can see there's roblox among us snapchat youtube insta there's loads on here that i hadn't even heard of and they are really useful as adults even someone who's like i feel like i'm relatively young and i'm relatively up to date with kind of new things that come out but there's a lot on here that i don't i haven't heard of and there's a lot of things that i don't know about that 16 year olds or 13 year olds do online i just i just don't know we don't know as adults and i think it's we need to have that attitude rather than that sort of naive like stick our head in the sand type of attitude towards it we need to try to be educating ourselves all the time and learning about what is out there all these different fact sheets on the different apps you can see right at the top of them it gives an age for what it's recommended for and then it talks about how you can report people on there like blocking users like different chat features and things and risks that are involved in the different apps it's really useful i found just to have a little look through at the different things look at the age range look at the potential like what what is this app it kind of just explains the app what is it like i haven't heard of a few of them like okay that's that so there is that resource if you want to check that out along the same lines of that is something that i found that is nationalonlinesafety.com which i think it's aimed at schools but it's brilliant just to like have a look at you do have to create a account to get these guides but every wednesday they have a thing called i've forgotten wise up wednesdays and they produce a fact sheet surrounding an online topic it could be about a different app or it's about so like this one here is 10 top tips to respect for respect online a digital world for everyone to actually view them like i say you have to get an account i just thought they were really good to talk about with children i think it's so important to, to really talk and have these open conversations with children about all these various things and you can see there's like so what is netiquette hit the pause button see the other side mind your language be sure before you post it's so important to have these conversations when when children are, are still young you can see there's other ones what parents need to know about youtube what parents need to know about horror games replica which i think is a like quite a new app that came out how to set up new devices for children all of these resources are out there just you have to go and take a look and find them i think just they are fantastic so i would encourage you to do that so once i had found these resources and i educated myself a little bit more about the different apps and things and the ages i, I generally know that you've got to be sort of 13 plus for most things but other some things are um, younger than that and so once i educated myself a little bit i had to have these, these conversations with the children on what is it that you're wanting to do what is it that you were used to doing maybe and it could be that they used to just have free reign of a phone and go on anything and never have any sort of limits and it's difficult for them then to accept that you're going to put rules in place but again I, it's just i've got to do this i've got to keep you safe for me anyway that's the conversation that's what i say so we, yeah we had a conversation on what was it that they wanted to do what apps were they wanting to access and it could you know it could be anything they might just want to go on I say just, but they might just want to go on YouTube. They might be wanting to go on like, I hate TikTok. They want to go on TikTok or like Snapchat and you've got to figure out what is it that they're wanting to do. They might be that they want to, they're used to like going to bed. They might have their phone upstairs and sit upstairs on their phone all day. And it, what is it that they're wanting to do basically? And then it's important to sit and one, make house rules and make it, make it with the children because there's some things that 100 i am not budging on and there's some things that i can be flexible on and, I, and it's important to sit there and explain the reasons why with the children because for me i am 100 not going to budge on 
you are not taking your device upstairs at bedtime and falling asleep watching it playing on it or whatever that is just a non-negotiable for me that is not happening we know for ourselves as adults i try to not do that for myself it's a new thing that i put in for myself i know it's a bad habit like we all get into these bad habits it's a bad thing we know that we should not be watching devices we shouldn't be having our devices in bed as adults we know that and so <laughs> it's it's bad for us and so our children certainly shouldn't be doing it and that's just a non-negotiable it's not happening for me and i explained the reasons why that that is and I looked at some things online to show them online to back up my thoughts about it and say, look, it says here that we, we shouldn't be doing this, blah, 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 and so on and so on. So that was, yeah, like I said, non-negotiable. But then there are other things that maybe we can negotiate surrounding and things like age range and things. I'm not negotiating with age. If this app says you've got to be 13, you've got to be 13. Um... I mean, I've never had a 12 year old. Maybe if anyone has got advice, what happens if you have a 12 year old who wants to go on, I don't know. So I'm trying to think of something that maybe isn't that bad, but an app that maybe isn't too bad. I'm not sure what that would be. Is it that like, as far as the your local authority or your independent fostering agency is concerned, it's like that's a massive no. Is it down to your discretion? Someone who is more knowledgeable than me, let me know down below in the comments. Because my own thought would be, if there's a recommended age range, then there's a recommended age range, you ain't doing it. But maybe that's unrealistic. I'm not sure. The next thing I want to talk about is your where you get your internet from. So I get my internet through BT. Um, I know that Sky have it, um, and whoever your provider is, just message them or, or just Google it if they've got the same sort of thing. You can see here that I have an app that shows all of the devices that are connected to my wi-fi and if i go into one of them so i can either pause their wi-fi for one hour two hours until the morning you know or whenever i want i can set a bedtime so at a certain time that device will no longer connect to the internet i can do a custom schedule for myself so that's potentially a really good thing if that's maybe what you want to do also i found that family link is really good now i haven't downloaded it because i haven't found the need right now but you can get this on the app store and on the play store it is basically a parental control app for your devices it's a bit similar to the bt one but i think there's more options you can see here if i just show you on the store there are some more options in the fact that you can view the apps that they're going on and you can manage the apps you get notifications of if they're trying to get an app you can approve it or not approve it so i think that is a really good app to use like i say i haven't used it uh, so if anyone has again let us know down below in the comments if it is as good as it looks in the store it, it looks fantastic in terms of being able to sort of control what they are what they are doing online and on their devices and so they're the things that i found that have really been useful for me i keep saying it throughout this video but anyone with any more advice down below in the comments so what i have done with the rules and i don't really like the word rules but like the boundaries that we've put in place we've we sat down we sat together did them and we we sort of typed them out up and we've got them that you know there is no devices in bedrooms this will i mean obviously this is age dependent and it's child dependent as well you may have a 12 year old who you know you is a really sensible kid and you really kind of trust and you may be able to think right okay i will allow them to have x in their bedroom for a little bit of time you may have a 12 year old that you really think actually this is i don't feel comfortable with this and so you've got to kind of figure that out for yourself as the foster carer what where do you feel comfortable I don't know whether I would ever feel comfortable with them having devices up in their bedroom, but I haven't had older children, like I haven't had a 16 year old. Is that realistic to not allow devices upstairs? I don't know, I don't I, I don't think so to be honest. But the the most important thing is keeping keeping them safe and having these open conversations about online safety so they're aware of the dangers. So I have set up YouTube Kids youtube kids is a new one for me i've never used youtube kids before when my son was little they didn't have youtube kids i don't think um or maybe i was just a bad parent and just let him go on youtube i'm not sure i'm pretty sure they didn't have youtube kids when he was little but they didn't really have youtube 
when he was like little little anyway we sat we sat together we set up youtube they were so annoyed with me and said that youtube kids was rubbish and they just wanted to go on youtube and they were going to be sensible and they were only going to watch this and this and this and all of them were good like you know decent things i'd heard of them before they all seemed pretty fine but then it's the conversation yeah you may only just want to watch those things but you may get videos suggested to you that aren't maybe safe and they were so annoyed about cassette getting youtube kids we made the profiles they were just like moaning to me i said look why don't you just search other things in there youtube kids is fantastic you can choose between naught to four if you've not used it i'm sure you have but it, you choose between naught to four you know like different profiles and then you choose naught to four five to eight and then nine to twelve and then the content that is shown to the child is appropriate for that age range so we set that all up they sat and they searched for the things that they had wanted to watch and they're all on the youtube kids app for them so i was like see it's all there there's no problem with having youtube kids rather than youtube is there and so they were happy with that which was which was wonderful i'll be honest i have a massive issue with screens and sort of like online time for young children i really can't see why anyone sort of under the age of like i mean i'd go as high as four to be honest but maybe 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 two i don't know but why on earth that there needs to be any screen time for those young children just like get out in the world and play is my is my thought on it but i mean not judging if you do you or however you think but i really try to limit screen time as much as possible for the like the, it's like the younger you are like the less screen time you have in my opinion go out and explore and have a wonderful time digging in mud and stuff so that's yeah that's how i approach it and, and children may have come to you very used to screen time lots of screen time and it's gonna be a learning curve for them my rules how i've set it up in my house is that individual screen time this isn't to say that we don't like watch a movie together on the telly or something but individual screen time there's nothing which you know when like you're at, you're at a restaurant or something and you see like a mum and dad and two kids and all of them are sat it's like mum and dad are sat on their phone and the kids have each got either a phone or a little tablet or something and they're watching something and i think why have you come out for tea because all four of you are just sat in your own little world with your head in the screen put them down and talk to each other it drives me insane absolutely insane um but anyway i have put limits on amount of time in individual devices like i say we can sit and watch a film together that's completely different but everyone like, it, you know like just oh it drives, like, everyone's in the same room but everyone's just got their head in their own device in their own little world it, it's oh, i hate our society <laughs> these days anyway oh we're on a bit of a rant I need to shut up and be quick because I've got to go and get <laughs> collect the kids. I've put a time limit on it. I've talked a few times how I've introduced this relaxed time in the afternoon, which can, it can take the form of many things. It's basically, it's ceremony to break is what it really is. But it's, everyone does something relaxing. It has generally taken the form of little one goes for a sleep, um, watch the TV or iPad device, whatever. And it ranges from between sort of an hour to two hours. Yeah, two hours is the max. It never really gets to two hours, to be honest. But between one and two hours, we have this relaxed time in the afternoon. Obviously, when the kids are in school, I will have to adapt that and change it to... I don't know what I will change it to. But for right now, we have between one and two hours in the afternoon. Which I think is a massive, massive amount of time, in all honesty. For relatively young children, like primary school children. They have that time that they can go on a device on the apps that i've pre-approved that i feel are safe and appropriate for them in terms of their age and their sort of understanding and appreciation of everything it's not necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to go off age all the time there's more to it than age but yeah they just have that time and it works and it's good and there's no issues and everything they can sit they sit in the lounge area or they can go and sit at the table and it definitely is still a topic that i'm learning a lot about very quickly and like i say it's very new 
I need to stop talking now because I need to go and collect the children. But as I've said all the way through this, any any advice on anything to do with online safety for children, please leave it down below in the comments. I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thumbs up if you enjoyed, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.